Hello, po, and uh, welcome once again to Everything um, Bible. And uh, we are here back at the book of the Philippians. We're going to start a new um, chapter this evening, which will be chapter 3. Uh, yesterday, uh, we praise the Lord for the conclusion of chapter 2, which is really a uh, great ins- uh, instruction, great instructions given by the Apostle Paul. And um, of course, the theme of our um, series is joyful living. And uh, it just seems like today we're going to go back to that focus because uh, the v- first verse of chapter 3 really in- Paul encourages them again to rejoice. Uh, to always rejoice in the Lord. And that is the key phrase of this book. Rejoice in the Lord. And we will see, you'll see that uh, even in chapter 4 as well. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll uh, make a point out of that uh, later on. Um, but I hope that chapter 2 is a blessing to you. That we don't forget those instructions given by Paul. Um, that though it was given to people uh, around 2,000 uh, years ago. Um, of men, men, uh, it's really still applicable to our time. You know, the Bible is always applicable to us, even today. It is always relevant to our life. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, uh, what your situation is. The answer always lies in the Word of God. And if we just follow the principles that are clearly laid out by the Bible, uh, by God through through the writers that are the, the, that wrote the Bible, then you're going to live a life that is pleasing to the Lord, may not seem glamorous at all on the outside, people on the outside looking in, but you're going to live a life that is uh, content, that has contentment, that has joy uh, in that. And um, so we'll, be, we'll begin chapter 3 talking about just that, uh, joy, rejoicing in the Lord. So I hope that uh, you're ready. And if you're ready, may you please share the video. Uh, I know that most of our members are can get up early and you guys are just watching can't be watching live but that's okay i hope that uh, we're still uh, aiming to get closer to the lord especially during this time we have a lot of time on our hands and praise the lord for that time that we can use in order to have more knowledge about him fellowship is great um, time with family is always great but nothing beats time with the lord so uh, we'll, we'll start here uh, in verse number, and, and we'll start here and end here. Verse number one, finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you. To me, indeed, it's not grievous, but for you, it is safe. So we're talking about uh, joy again. Whenever we talk about joy, especially in the Bible, when, when, when the writers of the Bible um, encourages the believer to, to have joy, it's not the joy that we can find here in the world. It's not the happiness that we can find in the world. The world finds happiness um, in things that are basically sinful, things that would just really gratify your flesh, gratify what looks good, uh, satisfy what looks good to you, satisfy what feels good for you. That is where they find joy or, or happiness. But we know that those kinds of things never really last. Um, if their happiness is in those things that are uh, 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 giving them satisfaction, and when those things are not there anymore, then they that's then when they feel sadness and depression. That's why during this time of pandemic, uh, when so many things were stripped off of people, uh, they can't go places where they want to go anymore. They can't do things that they normally love doing, uh, hobbies, uh, sports, uh, going to places, you know, shopping, all of these things. Um, we find people depressed. And we find people uh, really having this uh, mental uh, uh, trouble because of the situation. And we can see that that is the result to people who do not have real joy in their lives. And when Paul talks about real joy, we talk about joy that can really, uh, that, that lasts for your lifetime and, and, and uh, uh, that can sustain you in whatever situation that is. So Paul is just encouraging them again to rejoice. And it seems like it is something that is uh, odd because chapter 1 and chapter 2, we don't really find that much reason to rejoice, especially Paul. He didn't really, uh, looking, looking at his situation, there's not really much 
reason to rejoice. If I'm an unbeliever, I look at his life, I won't be happy. There's nothing there to be joyful about. Um, not only am I in prison, not only, uh, uh, although, uh, albeit in house arrest, not only am I not stripped of my freedom, but I am being um, spoken badly of in the churches that I started. And yet, Paul says, I'm joyful. And yet, Paul says to the people that he's writing to, uh, um, be joyful, rejoice in the Lord. So he says here, finally, my brethren. So we know we hear a lot of jokes about uh, the, the epistles of Paul. Whenever he says, finally, my brethren, he goes on uh, a few more chapters. And uh, I know a few pastors who are like that. Um, so they're really biblical. But when Paul says, finally, my brethren, Paul is, like, is just trying to transition to something else. Because we can see here in chapter 3, that he's going to give warnings after warnings and just really more uh, instructions to these people, but, uh, but not, not before reminding them of Paul wanting them to be joyful. So Paul is like saying, okay, now on to the rest of it. So I told you my situation. I told you my prayer for you. I told you uh, some instructions. I told you about Timothy, Epaphroditus. is now on to what the, the rest of the things I'm going to say. Now, uh, the Bible says here, finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. So I have, as I have said a while ago, that is the key phrase in this book, rejoice in the Lord. And the main thing, the glaring point there is joy is in the Lord. Joy is in the Lord. And real joy, lasting joy and peace in our hearts is, uh, is when we find it in the person of our the Lord Jesus Christ. And other than that, you will not be uh, uh, truly joyful. You will not truly be joyful. That's why uh, people who can only truly be joyful are people who, are, who have God in their hearts, who people have Christ in their hearts. Basically, people who are saved. If you are saved, you can truly be joyful if you find that joy in the Lord. Now, uh, these people needed uh, reminding that you find your joy in the Lord. That means even these believers sometimes forget that. Us believers, sometimes we forget to, to, to find our contentment, find our peace, find our joy in the Lord. Sometimes we place it on people. If you place it on people, then your joy is going to be uh, very much inconsistent. Why? Because people change all the time. They're not always good to you. Even your spouse is not always good to you. Uh, they, they, they sometimes disappoint you or maybe most of the time uh, disappoint you. Even your pastors disappoint you. So if you place your joy in people, it's going to be inconsistent. If you place your joy in circumstances, you, you can easily be robbed of that joy. When circumstances change, when circumstances are not good anymore, when circumstances seem to be, to be getting worse and worse and worse, then you cannot find that joy again. But if we do find it in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ, that's when our joy will be unchangeable. That is when our joy will be settled. That we will just be joyful no matter if people change, no matter if people come and go, we're joyful. We're going to be joyful no matter the circumstance. Good or bad, getting worse, getting better, whatever that is, Paul in prison, Paul being defamed, it doesn't matter. If his joy is in the Lord, the Lord doesn't change. The Lord doesn't, uh, uh, his, his truth remains. So your joy then, if you find it in the Lord, it's going to be settled. It's going to be unchangeable. Remember in the book of Habakkuk chapter 3 and in, in, in the ending of that book, if you read uh, uh, the, the first few chapters in this short book, you read that uh, the Lord, show, uh, first of all, Habakkuk was discouraged because he is seeing the the uh, the bad things is happening in this in the with the people of God and then God showed him uh, that worse things are yet to come and there are even uh, 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 things that you can't imagine that I'm gonna allow my people to experience so instead of of uh, having uh, uh, of being depressed for a while he he didn't accept that but when he found that joy in the Lord what did he say in verse number chapter 3 verse 17 and 18 Although the fig tree shall not blossom, so even though there's none of that, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, the fields shall yield no meat, the flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stall. So basically, if there's nothing else, if nothing else remains, um, what did he say? Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation because that that joy is found in the person of our Lord, in God. That's why it can be 
unchangeable. So uh, he says, finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. So it seems like every uh, a few verses that Paul always reminds them of this concept of being joyful. And we need, rem- we need reminding. We-, we need to be reminded of that as well. Um, it's not uncommon for believers to feel sad or be depressed or be disappointed or be discouraged. Uh, that happens every once in a while. That's why it's good to be reminded. It's good to be reminded of God. So he said that, finally, my uh, brethren, uh, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, me, to me indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. So basically, it means what it says. So even though I have already said this before, even though while I was there, uh, I taught you about this. But I want to remind you, and I want to say this again and again. Uh, to me, it's okay. It's all right to repeat these things. Why? Because it's going to be safe for you. So it's, it's just like a, a father or a, a parent uh, repeating uh, 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 principles to their kids, uh, uh, commands to their kids, uh, warnings to their kids. They never get tired of doing that. Why? Because he, you love your kid. So uh, it doesn't matter. Okay, I'm just going to tell, tell, warn you three times or four times and then I'm going to let you uh, get hurt. Or I'm going to let you um, fall or whatever. That does, it doesn't work that way. Every time you get a chance to warn your kid, you're going to warn your kid. And it doesn't matter to you as long as you keep your kid safe. So it's the same thing with Paul here. My heart, it doesn't matter. I'm going to keep on reminding you guys to rejoice. I'm going to keep teaching you. Why? Because it's going to be safe for you. That's why we should not uh, feel uh, exasperated when things are being repeated uh, for us. When, when, when uh, our, our preachers, our leaders, our pastors are repeating these things over and over and over again. Uh, pastor, you said that last week. Pastor, you said that last month. It doesn't matter. The reason why they're doing that is because they see danger coming or they see that we're forgetting something and they keep on reminding us. And it doesn't harm us anyway. Right? The reason why, why we will get exasperated is because we keep on hearing the things that we keep on disobeying. So Paul is basically saying, all right, uh, I may not have given you much reason to rejoice, but the fact that the Lord is working in, in uh, the gospel through me, through you, and the gospel is flourishing, I want you to just rejoice. And just don't put that joy in me. Don't put that joy or get that joy from me, from my circumstance, from your circumstance. Get that joy in the person of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And you are going to be, uh, that joy is going to be consistent. It's going to be unchangeable. It's going to be settled. So I hope that we find our joy in Christ. I hope that we find that in the person of Christ and not be affected by everything else around us. Tall order, not easy, but by the grace of God, we can do that. So I hope that helps you today. Uh, God bless you, Paul.